Hello students, our today's lecture deals with ocean currents, their types and we will study about the El Nino Southern Oscillation which is one of the most important ocean activity that affects the weather of the whole world. So let's start with the lecture. When we talk about ocean currents, there are different ideologies that we come across. A simple and the most asked question in this reference is, how come the water inside the water body is moving in a different direction than the rest of the water? When you see an ocean current, you will see the movement is like a, a stream of water running inside the ocean. The question that raises up here is how the water is moving in different direction or why the water is moving in different direction. To answer these questions we have to go a little into the rotation and the density and the temperature like factors of water. We all know that the ocean currents are generated through different factors. It can be a variation in temperature. Or variation in the density of the water. That is how much salinity the water carries. The Coriolis effect. Which is generated due to rotation of the earth. These are the factors which are held responsible for the development of ocean currents. Throughout the world we see that different kind of ocean currents are witnessed along the continents. Majorly these ocean currents are divided into two types on the basis of their temperature. One are called warm currents, the other are called cold currents. As you can see in this map, that different ocean currents are flowing around the world. Some of these are warm currents like the Brazilian current here, the Gulf Stream, the Kuroshio current, the Agulas current and like that. On the other hand, the cold currents are like the California current, the Benguela current, the East Australian current, the Oyashio current, etc. One thing to notice here is the origin of these two types of current. You must observe here that the warm currents are originating from the equator and moving towards the pole resulting they carry their warm temperature with them and uh, in the coastal areas from wherever they pass they forward this temperature and affect the climatic and weather condition of the zones. We can see their effects 
like the Gulf Stream, which soothes the climate of the Canadian coastal belts, or the Brazilian Current, which, being a warm current, raises the temperature of the coastal area. On the other hand, the cold currents are originated from the poles and move towards the equator, resulting they carry cold temperature with them. And this cold temperature is also seen showing impacts on the coastal belt, like the Californian current, which decreases the temperature of the Californian area, or the Peru current, which affects the Peruvian belt and brings the seasonal changes here. So the first division of current is on the basis of temperature. The second division is on the basis of the depth at which they are found. They can be called surface currents. and deep water current as the name itself shows the surface currents are found at the upper level of water usually uh, only 10 percent of the ocean water is involved in the surface currents and they are found at the top 400 meters of the Ocean. Whereas the deep water current are found below the mark of 400 meters of the sea level. The effects of these two currents are also seen on the coastal areas the surface current because is closer to the atmosphere affects the temperature of the zone whereas the deep water currents are engaged in the process of upwelling upwelling that is the the shuffling of deep ocean water which results into uh, help of the uh, minerals to reach the uh, surface and which helps in the fishing activities along the coast. So we divide the ocean currents into major two bases. The most important activity that you see related with the ocean currents is the El Nino effect. I am sure every one of us has heard of the effect but we are never completely certain of how this current uh, works or how is it effective for the world temperature. Let's start with this the El Nino Southern Oscillation. The El Nino Southern Oscillation, it is a band of anonymously warm ocean water temperature that occasionally develops of the western coast of South America, here as you can see, and it causes climatic changes across the Pacific Ocean. Uh, the term Southern Oscillation here refers to the Southern Hemisphere that is below the equator which is seen somewhat in this area. So the southern is the southern hemisphere. Oscillation is a to and fro movement of uh, wind. Here we will witness that the wind is continuously uh, shoving from the western coast of South America towards the eastern coast of Australia. To start with this El Nino process. We need to understand what is the situation existing there. As you can see in this map, the Peruvian coast of South America is witnessing a cold current which is known as Peruvian current 
because of being located close to Peru or it is also known as Humboldt current. This current is moving from the uh, polar zones towards the equator. This movement affects the weather condition of the coastal zone. It being a cold current flows at a depth under the ocean. This movement shuffles the water from underneath and uh, the nutrients they are forced upward which brings the fishes along the coastal belt. This whole uh, scenario helps the fishermen which live along the coast and the condition is stable for a certain duration. The El Nino effect is when this cold current is substituted by a warm current. It gets weak and was, is replaced by the warm current resulting into a complete halt, a complete stoppage over the upwelling which was occurring here. This results in an increase in temperature into this zone and a complete opposite situation prevails here. The temperature drops at the eastern coastal belt. As the temperature drops, the pressure rises up and here the condition is vice versa. The pressure falls. The wind movement occurs from high pressure to low pressure zone. Here in the diagram itself, you can see that the normal wind movement is from the Peruvian coast towards the East Australian zone. But during the process of El Nino, the system it reverses and wind starts moving in an opposite direction. The whole condition, it prevails for a duration of around 7 to 9 months and then it retains back to its earlier condition. This change in temperature and pressure affects the weather of the whole world. We can see that when the temperature of the Peruvian belt is affected, it affects the temperature of the eastern Australia. When the wind movement is uh, in a normal way from the Peruvian zone to east Australian zone, it takes all the moisture from here and it sheds into the eastern Australian belt resulting into good showers in the East Australian area. But when the El Nino effect is witnessed, the showers is, are reversed towards, towards Peruvian zone. And now the East Australian area would be witnessing droughts. So we can see how the El Nino effect is defining the temperature and pressure change and thus affecting the climatic condition of the area. We can write down the El Nino effect through points as well.
so i hope we have made the concept a little clear to you all thank you so much